Uh, good afternoon, uh, Fergus Dolan here from NALA. You're very welcome to our webinar today on taking away the fear of technology for learners and tutors. Uh, we're delighted to have Mark McGuigan from uh, Tipperary ETB. Mark will be facilitating today. He, he teaches literacy te technology and ESOL, I believe, in Tipperary ETB. So because Mark's internet is a tiny bit glitchy, he's turned off his camera. So we'll, we'll, we'll proceed and see how it goes. But anyway, we can see his presentation and hopefully we'll be able to hear him clearly. Um, I'll step in, I suppose, if, if, if we can't hear him and we'll, we'll think of plan B. I definitely won't step in and deliver the webinar, but I'll step in and chat about other stuff. Okay, Mark, over to you. All the best. Okay, thank you, Fergus. Hi, everybody. Thanks very much for tuning in. And um, our webinar today is called Taking Away the Fear of Technology for Learners and Tutors, How to Make Technology Enhanced Learning Easy, or maybe that's a big promise, or easier. So I changed that there. And um, let's have a look. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mark McGuigan. So I'm a tutor here with Tipperary ETB. I teach ESOL classes. I teach digital literacy, which is um, internet skills and smartphone skills. I teach computer classes, so word processing and uh, databases, and I, and I teach a driver theory preparation course. And I love gadgets. So I like to kind of uh, try, try different kinds of what I've discovered myself along the way. And also it will give you a chance to speak to each other and share what, um, what technology you found worked well for you in the class and uh, which ones you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't use again, okay? So I'd like to explain who I'm teaching. So for my SL classes, I teach, um, I have a lot of uh, students who are refugees and I have a lot of students who are migrant workers. And then for my digital skills classes and my smartphone classes, I'd have a lot of uh, older people in the class, uh, retired people who'd like to learn how to use their smartphones and the internet. Um, I'd often have students that have learning challenges in class. So that would um, you know, encourage me to try and use technology as a way of you know, offering uh, different ways to help them if they've, if they've challenges with uh, reading or you know, the, you know, the standard um, you know, lecturing style. So, so that's that would give me that that's that everybody can uh, take part and contribute to the class okay, um, and then um, so Mark, i teach uh, uh we lost you there for a minute or yeah. two and um, we keep going we see how it goes oh, i'm really sorry there's actually been um We've got some internet problems in the in the center, so um okay I'll keep going and hope for the best. So this is the timeline that we're looking at for today. So first of all, I'd like to talk about QR codes. So um a lot of this presentation today is about e using QR codes in the classroom for sharing content with students. I'm going to give you two examples of um well I'm going to give you one example of using a, a QR code. And it's going to link to an, an online dice. So that's something that I use in the class just to, to, um, to randomize uh, things. So I could randomize maybe some questions or I could randomize uh, students to work together in pairs or teams. So I'll give you a look at that in a minute. I also am going to talk about the benefits of technology enhanced learning. So some of, some of the benefits that uh, I have seen myself for sure, and uh, some some tips and tricks then for how on. I'd like to show you a, a live game that I use in class, and it's called Quizlet Live. So basically, I take um, I take quiz questions and I turn them into a quiz, and the students can see see that on the screen, okay? And then after that, in the breakout room, and you can come back with some feedback then. 
Okay, so to scan the QR code, I hope everybody, uh, well, I'm sure a lot of people have used these uh, here, have used them before. So you might see them for shopping app or we also have them for the, the COVID app used a QR code as well. So I'd like you to try scanning this during the, the presentation, not this exact QR code, I've got another one coming up. So the way that I scan QR codes and I ask my students to scan them is I first of all ask them to just try their camera app. So I just let them open the camera app and hover the camera over the QR code. So the QR code could be printed on a piece of paper or it could be on the screen. So I could project the QR code and they could point the camera at uh, my whiteboard screen. Or else I could walk around with the, uh, these work off paper. So once they hover over the QR code, the URL, the URL of the website that I want, want them to go to pops up. Okay, so the QR codes, it's like a shortcut. So um, I don't need to message the students with a link to a website. And, and I don't need to ask them to Google the website. They can just scan this. If the camera app doesn't work, which happens on a lot of uh, people's phones, they open the camera app and nothing happens. So, so I find that iPhones uh, generally work better for just using the camera app and it will come up by itself. But then with some Android phones, so any other phone uh, that uses Google, so Samsung, Huawei, um, Xiaomi, Nokia, any of those other phones. So then I would ask the students to use Google Lens. So Google Lens is an app that they can download from the Play Store or else they probably already have it incorporated into their Google app. So most people with a Google phone or an Android phone will have Google pre-installed. So all they need to do is go into their, their Google app and, and they should see this logo, the Google Lens logo. And I love QR codes. I really, really like to use QR codes because we don't need to set up accounts, okay? It works without any, any accounts, no account names, no email addresses, and no passwords. So I'm sure if you've used um, technology that uses accounts in the class before, can, can often get bogged down with problems with uh, passwords or accounts or multiple accounts, or uh, the app doesn't like the password the students are, want to put in or maybe the students might ask us, the tutor, to make a password. And of course, that's like, you know, that's gonna to lead to trouble, you know, when the password gets lost or whatever. So it's great that um, we don't need to use any accounts or any passwords. So number three, you don't need to Google search. So I don't need to say, right, look up this website because what I've found in the past is everybody's phone comes up with different results. So I might know the exact web website that I'm trying to find but because I've already been there in my class prep but my students are not going to know that so so they'll end up going into different websites and then they'll say that uh, it doesn't look the same doesn't look the same on their device or else they might click into an ad instead or they might click onto a sponsored link and they end up somewhere else so so that Even even a Google search can cause problems sometimes. For what I really like about the QR codes is I can hand out a piece of paper with the QR code printed, or else I can just have it up on the screen and the students can uh, scan it from there. Now, so you might say, well, how do you get the QR code onto a piece of paper? And how do you make a QR code that matches the website that you want to, the students to go to? So this is how I do that. So what I do is I use this um, Chrome add-on called QR Code Generator. There's probably lots of other ways as well to make QR codes, but this is the one that I find that I find myself is um, easy because it's it just attaches onto Chrome. 
So you can just Google that. You can just Google QR code generator and it'll come up. And then you, you, you uh, download that and it actually um, installs into your Chrome app. Okay, so then that allows you to take any website um, or you could have a piece of content that you've made and you could link to that if you like. So um, once, it's, once you have it online and they can get in there, but I find websites, YouTube videos, things like that, that, that works best. Um, so that's how you do that. So you, you basically, when you go into that code generator, you just put in the address of the website download the picture so you'll have that so here's an, here's an example of um one of the one of the websites or apps that i would use okay so we at the tutor forum there uh, last week we uh i used this game where i got everybody to scan a handout uh, and it, it brought everybody to this website freeonlinedice.com and then i asked everybody to just go to that website using the qr code and then change the number of sides on this dice. So as you can see here, it says, how many sides do you want your die to have? So, so we say dice. And um, so say, for example, if you've got 10 different questions that, that you want to randomize, you put 10 sides on the dice. If you've got 15 students in the class, you can put 15 sides on the dice and it can randomly, then when you spin the dice, you're gonna randomly select one of those students, okay? So scan the QR code. So I handed out a piece of paper. Can't do that today because um, we're all in different locations. I asked everybody to set the dice to 13 sides and take turns rolling the dice. All right, so here's some of the questions we went through. So I can actually, I'm just gonna try now going out and I'm going to show you this page. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up this Microsoft Word document. Close this one for my class. Okay, so here is our 13 questions. So this is printed on a piece of paper. And here is our QR code. So if you've got a minute there, would you like to, would you like to um, scan this off your own screen? So like I said, you can, you can scan that using your camera app off your phone or you can scan it using Google and Google Lens. Okay, so let's have a look. And if you can give that a try there and um, you can go into the chat and tell me if it worked or not, okay? This will just give you an idea of how easy it is to scan the QR code, I hope. Okay, I'll move this out of the way so you can actually get to the screen now. So, so anybody having any joy there? It worked, did it? Grace, very good, Derv. Very good, Mary. Grace, very good Corrigan, it worked for Grace as well. Very good, thanks very much, Grace. So far, so good. Now I don't, um, how do you answer the questions? So you have to think up your own answers. So I just use this as an icebreaker at the um, at the forum there last week. Okay, so let's do one for an example. Okay, so um, I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna. We lost you there, Mark. We can't hear you at the moment. On my internet. And I'm going to, I'm oh, sorry, am I back now? Hello? Am I back? Yes. Am I back there, Fergus? Sorry about that. Yes, we can hear you now. Yes, sorry. 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 I'm really sorry, everybody, about the internet connection. So, um, so I've set the dice to 13 sides. And now I'm going to click on there. And I've landed on number two. So just as, as an example, so we've got number two, if you could have free unlimited service for five years to an extremely good cook, chauffeur, housekeeper, or personal secretary, which would you choose? Ooh, that's a tough question, isn't it? Um, 
I'm going to go for the uh, housekeeper. Definitely the housekeeper. What do you think, Fergus? What would you go for? I think I'd go for the cook. So yeah, or the Russian cook. Work and making an ultra quick dinner before getting the kids out for training. So massage would be, yeah. See, yeah. there you go. There you go. Different strokes for different folks, you know? Yeah. So I would... We've lost you there again, Mark. I'm going to move back here. We have you again. Yeah. Okay. You're back. And I just got, sorry about again, to, um, We're we're losing you quite a bit more now, Mark. We we can't we can't hear you now. My other slides. Are good. Okay, Mark. We're we just can't hear you at the moment. Yeah. Can't, can't hear you at all. Sorry. Oh, you're back. I'm you're sorry. Back. Um, back again. It's coming and going. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm just going to go back out here, and um, I'm just going to move on a little bit. So that there we go about the um, the dice and the QR code scanner. So hopefully you can hear me now, and I'll just keep on going with the benefits of technology enhanced learning that I've seen. Okay. I find that it's great for it. Uh, it starts off some fun in the class, you know, because, um, you know, the, the students be used. Used to using their phones and they normally use it in their, in their leisure. I also phones in class is very good because we're practicing digital skills that they use in everyday life too. It's So say we scan a QR code, they might have to do that, you know, input information into using the phones. It's very useful in, in everyday life as well. I also find it's great for peer-to-peer -peer connection. So I'd often get students to work two together on a phone, or even sometimes maybe three people together. The reason that I think it's really good is that we can allow the students to study asynchronously so they can they can uh, practice the same content uh, on the phone wherever they are on a train bus in work so you know yourself different students will have different timetables that might have you know the kids at different times or working at different times so i really think that it, it helps a lot um with uh with them being able to to study the content whenever they like themselves the other reason why i like phones is because phones are designed really really well to work internationally. So we've got a lot of icons and graphics and a lot of uh, visual design goes into phones that allows students from different countries or maybe students with some uh, literacy issues. It allows them to kind of see, see things as pictures. It's an, you know, just, uh, you know, handouts with text or else just listening to me, you know, I find it's more intuitive. They can find a way around it better. So um, some of my tips and tricks. So as I was saying, I like using the smartphones. All students, they're, they're used to navigating their smartphones already. So we don't have a situation where they're using it. Say we're letting them use a computer that they only use once a week. You know, so there isn't that uh, experience of, um, oh, yeah, what was I doing last week? Because they've already been on it, you know, in the seven days since, you know, maybe since the last class. So I think it's, uh, it's really great to just use phones over laptops. And I suppose, though, it depends. Some students would prefer to use laptops. The great thing about the Internet and apps is it works across any device they want. So um, as we said before, it's, I really like uh, any sort of technology with no accounts or passwords. 
I also really like, I think that it, it really builds on things that the students have done before. So, you know, it's, it's really great when we lost you there. Yeah, I want to work on something using the phone and the students say, um, you're back. Mark, just to interrupt one second, there's a question there on that slide. What's the plus sure. one approach? Oh, the plus one. Okay, so I was just going to get to that. So the plus one is uh, one of the guidelines uh, from UDL, so Universal Design of Learning. So I recently did a course uh, from a head and from UCD, and um, it's all about uh, you know d designing learning experiences. And uh, uh, so what we had to do was we had to change uh, one part of our one way of either accessing the content that we want to give or more than one way of students being able to contribute to the class. Okay, so the plus one approach means all you do is change one thing. So you don't need to To start again from scratch to change your whole for the again, semester Mark, and change went, one thing. You went, your internet went while well, you were explaining that line. Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. So Mark. what um so what the plus one approach means is that uh, say we want to introduce technology into our teaching practice, we don't need to start from scratch and redesign everything. So we don't need to come up with a completely new class plan, a completely new semester plan. Basically what we can do is all we need to do is change one, one part. So for example, say, we have a handout that we give out an extra way for the students to, to take on that content, which would be, you could make uh, turn that handout into an audio or into a video. So give them, you know, an extra way of accessing the information. So, um, so that's what the plus one means. It basically means even if you just change one little thing, see how that goes. And then you might do the same thing again for a different class or for a different topic or for a different group. Is that right? Thanks, Mark. And, um, one other question. Might... Uh, what was asynchronous? What does that mean? So asynchronous means that um, it's not, they don't have to study. Uh, they can study at a different time to the class time. So they can, so basically you're, if they have uh, information on their phone from you for your class, that they can just study that later on their own time, or they can, um, they can access your class uh, on their own time, so anytime they want. So, for example, you know, if they're working evenings, you know, they might be on your, say, for instance, um, and we missed that example. Say, for instance, and we, you went, you know, they're tired for your morning class or things like that, you know. So, okay, so, um, so say, for example, if, um, you know, you have a class in the evening, but you know, the, the student has a long day of work, so it's kind of tired in the evening. If because you are providing access to your to your class and your materials online using the technology, you can actually uh, they can actually access that when they feel uh, whenever they want themselves gives them the choice. Okay, so asynchronous just means and uh, not not all together in class. Okay, at the same time. So we we'll keep on going here. I have a few more tips and tricks. So another tip and trick that I would suggest is to not be afraid of things going wrong, like my internet did today. Sorry, I'm really sorry about that, Fergus. Not don't so don't be afraid of like trying things um, and just giving it a go because you know they'll understand that it's not your fault, you know, if the if the app doesn't work or you know, say for example, at the um at the forum there, I had originally planned to have two QR codes scanned by the participants, but then one actually uh, ran out. It didn't work anymore because it was only a 
24 hour link. So then what I did was you learn from the, you learn from the mistakes. So, you know, um, it's as, you know, as we, we all know ourselves, like the best way to learn is to, you know, you're not going to learn if there's no mistakes. So um, the other um, tip I would have is, I was saying this before, it's nice for them to share a device sometimes. And then also sometimes, you know, say uh, we're doing an activity that uses technology, it will encourage students to, to ask the student next to them, oh, did yours work? Mine looks like this. What does yours look like? You know, et cetera. So it kind of gets them working, working together more, which, which I really like. My other tip is look in the software that you already use. So say, for example, if you already have to use Microsoft Word every day for typing up the plans or typing up, you know, uh, uh, resources or whatever you need, uh, administration, there's often extra functionality in that. So they keep, they keep adding more and more functionality to the, the programs we already use. So for example, you've got immersive reader on Microsoft Word. So that can read out text for you. And you've got, say, inside PowerPoint, you can actually record video inside PowerPoint. So this, so you needn't um, start learning a new program from scratch. You could just add in one thing extra that PowerPoint does. For Go on us again there, Mark. We heard you could just add in one thing. Example. And then my last... We can't hear you there, Mark. You were just about to say your last point. Sorry. Could you repeat Sorry. that last point, please? Yes. Yeah. So my last point, my last point is that if you've got uh, some students in the class that are really good with the technology, they can actually. I find this particularly good in an ESOL class because I'd often find that um, the students' phones are in their own language. So if something goes wrong with, with their phone or the technology and they show it to me, um, it's hard for me to see what's going on because it's in Arabic or Ukrainian or Portuguese. Um, so uh, it can be handy for the, the, the other students in the class to help out. While I'm talking about phones that uh, are in different languages and you, you know you're trying to help the student with something on the phone and then you say, oh, oh, I can't read it myself. Another tip I would offer is to turn on Google Translate on your phone and then turn on the camera in Google Translate and you can actually translate text off some somebody else's phone like that. It's like an error message from Microsoft uh, accounts, something like that, and you don't know what they're talking about. You just know that the account is You're breaking up there again, Mark. It's to English for you, okay? So that's kind of, that's been very helpful for me. So um, so my last uh, point there was if you are in the situation where a student has a phone in, in their own language and they have an issue with uh, their phone, so there's a problem with uh, what you're trying to do on the phone, but it, the error comes up in a different language, you can actually use your own phone to uh, translate what's on their phone using um, Google Translate. And you just turn the camera on. You just turn the camera on in Google Translate and you can read, read it there, okay? So we were just speaking earlier a little bit about the UDL guidelines. So I'd, I'd encourage anybody who, who hasn't looked at this before to have a look at this website here. So it's the CAST website. And um, I'd, really, uh, I'd really recommend that course. It's the Digital Badge in Universal Design for Learning. And um, I just, I got a lot out of it. I thought it was really good. So that's where I got that plus one, plus one idea. So there we are there. It's at udlguidelines.cast.org. I have that link on the, in the presentation. So if you... Uh, if you get the, 
if you get the, the, the NALA website there. So let's have a look here. This is um this is another app that I like to use that I was saying earlier. It was um it's called Quizlet. So do many of you use Quizlet already? Just have a quick look in the chats there. I do I agree with the UDL course. Thanks, Kathleen. That's great. Now, now if you find things go wrong in the middle of class. Yeah, it's embarrassing, Ita, sometimes. Yeah, I'd agree. It's a little bit embarrassing, but, you know, you learn for the next time. And then, you know, the students, um, you know, they don't think we're superhumans, you know, like they can, they definitely, uh, they can, they can laugh along as well. I just, obviously, you know, if it's, uh, if it's, if it's not working whatsoever, I'd say just, you know, we have to move on to plan B, I suppose we can't, you know, don't want to spend too long struggling with it. And a uh, point there, Mark, from Mary Kenny saying sharing devices encourages communication, which is yeah. an end goal in an ESOL class. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree with you there. And that's it. And then, um, you know, uh, we were saying earlier, it's it's nice to kind of uh, get one student to help another student. So one. So and often I find that um, if a student says at a low level for ESOL, they really like to show they're at a, a higher level of other things, you know? So they might be a very high level of technology and it's just nice for them to kind of be like, look, I know more about this, you know? So it's, um, I think it's, a, it's kind of like, an, it, I think the students really enjoy being able to help as well a lot of the time, so. Sorry, I'm really sorry. That's the internet connection is dodgy here. I didn't, I didn't realize that until we actually, we got onto the call. So I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, and plus one, so we're talking about the plus one. Great. So I was just asking there, has, has anybody used uh, Quizlet before? There. So I'll just I'll give you a little look into my Quizlet. So I I pay for the uh, the paid version of Quizlet, thirty one euros ninety nine. The reason I do that is because I like to create my own uh, graphics that go into it. But you don't have to you don't have to get the paid one. You can get the free one. And now they have Quizlet Plus for teachers, which is a new thing. And um, it has extra, extra functionality that um, the free Quizlet didn't have. So, so um, I'd, I'd advise looking that up. Okay. So let's look here. This is a collection of flashcards that I made. So they're digital flashcards. And this is what I mean when I talk about the plus one approach. We've lost you there, Mark, again. Um, lyrics? I got the lyrics. I had a handout already. You lost you. Am I back? Am I back again? Yeah, you're back again. Okay. So so this is basically um, a set. So you make these sets of flashcards. So, I'm, so um, this is what I mean about the plus one approach. I already had this content. So I already had um, own for my smartphone class, okay? So basically, um, all I did was make this, make make a digital version of it. So it actually, it only took a few minutes. So there we go, that's the, that's the icon for send and that uh, flips the card, okay? And tells you what it is, all right? Thanks, Mark, there's so, a question there. Uh, when you yeah. say digital flashcards, do you put them up on a whiteboard or are the students all following you on their phones? Oh, hi. Thanks, Eve. So there's different ways of doing this, okay? So what you can do is you can, you can invite the students into your uh, flashcard collection and they can study on their own time or they can study individually uh, in the class or test each other or whatever. But you can also do a group game so that's what I wanted to show you today as well. We just lost you after you said show us as well. Um, Mark, I see a question there from Mary. Um, if the internet lets me. One off so the for Quizlet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be yearly. So that would be every... We can hear you now. Is it a one-off payment for Quizlet? Yeah, it's... um. It's so it's a yearly, it would be a yearly payment to pay the 31.99. If you want to um, 
add your own images. But if you don't need to add your own images, you can, you can use the free one. And this, uh, this quiz game that I'm going to show you, that works. Uh, that's, you can get that as part of the, the, the free version. Okay, so will I, show you, um, will I show you how to make a game out of this? Okay, so this would be a live game, right? So what Last we do is we go to this part called Classic Live. Like sure. Yeah, kind of. I think uh, I, I haven't used Kahoot very much, but some of my colleagues have. And I, I, I'm not sure that they use it more for quizzes, to use it more for quiz rather than flashcards. But I know they're, they're quite similar. They probably share a lot of the, the functionality would be like the same on, on both. So, so I definitely um, just try, try both. See, see which do you think suits your own purpose better. So, um, so I'll just show you here. Um, so that's that's the basic flashcards. Now this is the game. So how would I like the teams to be arranged? All right. So what I'll do is I'll just put you. I'll just put you in as individuals. Okay. So you're going to be able to join in on this. Okay. So I'm going to choose multiple choice definitions. So you'll see a picture and you have to choose what, um, what is the correct answer, okay? So now I'll just turn it. Now, so I'm asking everybody here now, if you have your phone handy, could you go into Google and could you Google Quizlet Live? Okay, so could you Google Quizlet Live? And what you should see is... So I'm gonna Google it here. Quizlet Live. And then it says join there. There it is there. You can go here or you can enter the join code. Oh, sorry, I'll go back. Just go to quiz at life. That was an old game popped up. Okay, here we go. So then we get a fresh screen. So if you can all try, if you can all Google Quizless Live. And hopefully you should this live. Press enter. And I selected the first thing that pop pops up here, Quizlet Live, Quizlet. And I went in there and I got this screen here. It's looking for show you which digits they are there. Okay, so here's the QR code. Students can are M, J, S. Oh, brilliant. We've already got K, Mary, Noelle, L, and Freya there. Okay, so we've got five, we've got five players already. So just um, let me know now if anybody else is, is trying to join. I, I'll, give you, I'll give you another minute, okay? So I'll have a look in the chats there, see if, uh, see if there's anybody having any issues. Just give me a shout if you have any problems. Sorry, I bring up the chat here. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, yeah, you know, that's a good point, Trace. I can actually, um, I could actually give you a link as well. I could, I could put a link into the chat here. Okay, so there's the link. So that, that, that should bring you straight into the game there. For a second. Okay. So let's start. Oh, we've got loads. We've got loads more people here. So that's great. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, team, but just for today, I just have everybody uh, on there individually, okay? Oh, another one. Thanks very much. So 
and you're all popping up there. So what you reckon? Are we ready to go? Will I start? Okay, here we go. So now look what happens. You get uh, you get assigned an a animal. Okay, so K, okay, you're a reindeer. Oh, sorry, two Ks. K, Y, you're a reindeer. And K, you're an ostrich. These are your puffins. Okay, and I'm gonna start. Okay, got disconnected. So I don't know what happened there. So obviously, if you're in the class. Just lost you there again, Mark. I'll try again. Okay, Mark. let's go. Okay, so you have to remember what uh, so, th so the tutor. The teacher would have to remember, like, who is the question right, and you move along. You're gone again there, Mark. I found recently that um, I had a crack, or really, you know, the first error, error was fine, everybody was saying, you know, good form, good crack. Like, but then everybody started to wilt a little bit, and then I found then when we brought the game in, it kind of got a, got a little bit of excitement going then. So, um, so that's a great thing about the Quizlet. Okay, so basically here were just some slides to show you how to join on there, and you did that. Well done. Thanks very much, everybody. Okay, so as I was saying, earlier, you've got the free version. So if you if you want to use your own uh, graphics, so I like to use the same picture that I'm using in my in the book or in the um, handouts. So I, I like to match it, so it's the, it kind of gives you the same experience uh, digitally that you would have on the handout. So that's why I want to use my own graphics. And um, so what you do is you make the make the flashcard sets, make the study groups, and. Um, create a group so you could have like a, you could have a few different people could all be on the same team so um, you know that that can that's nice as well for the peer-to-peer -peer learning because they have to tell each other and ask each other what the answers are all right so that's that's all that's all i have to show today everybody so i was wondering now would um would you like to go into a breakout room and Sure, Mark. We'll have time for breakout rooms. What do you think? Do you think speaker and maybe could you show the questions and open up? Uh, so I'm you and have a discussion. All right. What do you think, Fergus? Could you turn off the Quizlet music? Oh, Janie, I better turn that off. I better turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna close that out. Oh, okay. Jimmy! Like, so I close that out. I have to. <laughs> it's determined to go. It's like a disco in the yeah. end. Um, Mark, people are saying, yeah, given the yeah. technical problems, maybe not do the break good rooms. What about showing the question or two that you wanted people to discuss and letting them unmute and give their opinions? Oh yeah. So um, sorry. Do you mean the questions from earlier for? The, the icebreaker activity that we had? No, whatever no, you wanted I'll, them to I'll, talk about in the in the breakout rooms, just show them now 
and let anyone oh, who yeah. unmute and chat about it. Well, it's oh, up to grand, you, yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. rooms and getting yeah. feedback. Oh, grand. Oh, that's grand, no problem. So all, all I wanted to ask was, what did you think? What did you think about those few tips? That, that was all. And um, do you think they'd be doable or have you already done the same? Or, you know, have you found that some you prefer? You've just broken up on us again there, Mark. Can you hear me now, Fergus? Yeah, you're just back. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So, so Fergus, I was just, I was just thinking of a, a general of those um, ideas, and uh, do you, would you have any other questions on maybe uh, to uh, to just uh, maybe if there's one or two things you're not sure about how do you access one of those things? I could just explain a bit more. So, so, so Mary, that's, it. that's, Mary's that's all I would would like to ask everybody. Uh, in the chat box, Mark, Mary has written oh, very yeah, useful there, tips. Yeah. I've learned a few new things, which is great. Many thanks. Oh, great. Great. Thanks a million for, for joining. Thank you. Um, so which someone else said, the the tips to which ones? Go yeah. Tips. If anyone has a question for Mark, they could even unmute and just ask. Yeah, you can ask me. Uh, by voice if you like yeah that's great thanks very much the qr codes yeah it was actually i got the idea for the qr codes from um one of my colleagues he uses it for an inst so mark we've lost you again for our uh, forms am i back we've now lost you. yeah you're back now mark Okay. Okay, Fergus. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, I actually got the idea for the, the QR code off something one of my colleagues was doing. Um, uh, Peter uh, Cleary here in, in uh, Clonmel, he was using it as he was linking to a video, an instructional video for how to fill out our uh, admission forms, LDF forms. So, um, so I thought that was a brilliant idea. Yeah, you can, you can get a copy, Ita. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to put the presentation up yeah, as a PDF, and I'll, I'll forward it on to everybody. Can I say something, Fergus? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, the QR codes, Mark, were fantastic, and the your PowerPoint presentation is brilliant. Can't wait to see that. Oh, thank but, you. Um, the Quizlet I've used before, but never like to that extent with the flashcards and making it a game. So that was brilliant. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Thanks, Fergus. Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, may, somebody asked, could we run this webinar again? We might, yeah, we could do that in March. I'm doing some technology webinars. So uh, might talk to Mark about running this again because it was really good, but just because of the internet, it was a little bit glitchy. Yeah, I won't, yeah, I won't, I won't do it in, in the classroom again. To, there's, some, there's some problem with the Wi-Fi here. Sorry about that. Not a problem. These it's, things happen. You know, it's, it's, of, it's fine. All the tutors know that technology can let you down a little bit at times, and everyone knows that. Yeah. So, if there are any other questions, maybe just unmute now because Mary Kenny, have you a question? Yeah, just a comment in relation to the name of the session, and just a compliment, Mark, on his lack of stress you know, going through this, it, it really demos how important it is to be confident and competent and work through things when they don't work out. Um, and just to say, has anybody used PowerPoint Live? It's um, an update to PowerPoint um, 2022. Um, and it allows you, there's a sec section in the top bar of PowerPoint. You click on it, it generates automatically a QR code. And students who are literate in their first language but have little English go up and scan it, choose the language, Russian, Chinese, Lithuania, whatever language it is, and they can read everything you say that corresponds to, it doesn't have to correspond to the PowerPoint, but it's an amazing way of including other students. It can also be in English, 
that you're seeing everything the tutor says live written on your screen on your phone that's brilliant isn't it yeah so long as you don't do that during an, an english class yeah i actually am uh, one of my <laughs> Yeah, this, that's the thing, yeah, we, we, we've lost you there again, Mark. We just, we have to be kind of keeping up to date the whole time, because I, I actually find things, uh, we're getting. Am I back again there? Yeah, you're, yeah, back, you're back, now. back now. Hello, am I back? Oh, th thanks. Um, yeah, th thanks. Thanks. million for that for that uh, suggestion that the um the powerpoint live and then so the best thing i'd say you know uh, sometimes you might think oh i don't want to be you know have like 10 different plates spinning you know so it's it's nice when you're already in a program to just use one extra bit of functionality in that program rather than you know coming out of that and signing into something else or whatever so thanks very much Thanks. That that'd be really useful for everybody to to look up. Um, Mark, thanks a million. I think we'll we'll finish up now. Um, okay. But um, thanks so much, Mark. Even though you had some technical problems, as Mary said, you remained remarkably calm and not flustered, and you still went through all your presentation and explained everything. Showed us all your tips and ideas. So even despite the internet connection, I think. From the chat, you can see the people are very positive and they stuck with it till the end. So thanks so much. Uh, as Mark said, Mark will forward on the presentation to me and I'll send it out to all of you. And uh, also we've recorded this, so uh, it will have it up on the Nada YouTube channel in a day or two. So thanks, Mark, again, for being so calm. And uh, thanks everyone for tuning in and supporting this. Okay, bye-bye. I think Mark, that was it's kind of I think poor. Thanks. Mark. Bye everybody. Thank thanks very much. Bye. Bye.